Welcome back. A big week on Wall Street after the Federal Reserve left interest rates unchanged, fueling hopes that the Fed is done raising interest rates. That sent stocks higher and tanked bond yields. We also got a weaker than expected jobs report out on Friday. 150,000 jobs added to the economy in the month of October. 180,000 were expected. The unemployment rate ticked higher to 3.9 percent. Joining me right now to talk more about all of that is Forbes Media Chairman Steve Forbes and Bonson Group founder and managing partner David Bonson. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Thank you so much for being here. The fact that we had that revision for August and September indicating way fewer jobs than we thought just a month ago. Assess that and just explain to us why a weakening economy has actually uh, not been a problem for the markets. We're looking at a gain year to date, even with a bad October. Well, basically the whole week, the market's up over a thousand points. And I think that the issue at hand is bond yields. And people need to understand that the long bond yield is supposed to be measuring expectations for nominal growth. And that gets distorted in a period of high inflation. It starts pricing in concerns about inflation. That's largely gone away. Inflation expectations are very, very low right now. And yet we didn't get a recession. People started thinking there would be higher growth. Bond yields moved higher. And all of this is with the Fed distorting everything, making it very difficult for money managers like me to see clearly the signals and price discovery in the market. But, Maria, this idea that the Fed wanted to hurt the labor market in order to help inflation, this Phillips curve mentality, is the worst thing about present monetary policy. Steve's exactly right. They have to take their foot off the neck. They've been too tight too long, and they exacerbate a boom-bust cycle with this silliness. Yeah, you both agree on that, and I know this is a major issue. David, at the end of the day, how do I invest in this environment? I know you've been a dividend payer lover. You like those large quality names. Did anything change in the face of all of this uh, mixed economic data? How do you want to be invested going into year end? I think that people have got to be focused on quality and dividend growth offers a certain quality. In order for a company to continue paying and growing a dividend quarter after quarter, year after year, they have to have a stable balance sheet, they have to have less debt. You cannot get these high PE, high growth stocks that are very speculative and expect to come out okay in a period of economic volatility. That's where we are right now. Bond yields going up and down, questions about the recession. I can't encourage people enough to look for cash flow. There are really strong, not overpriced companies paying great growing dividends, and I think it makes all the sense in the world right now, Maria. Steve, you agree with that? Absolutely. It's nice to get cash in holding a stock. And the thing is, if it's a good company, even in turbulent times, eventually those dividends go up, the payouts go up, the capital gains go up. That's not true of bonds. All right. We will leave it there. Uh, Steve Forbes, David Bonson, great to see you both. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. We appreciate your time.